Hello, I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York. Welcome to One to One. New Yorkers are fortunate to be surrounded by artistic stimulation at every turn, whether it's the music of a string quartet playing on a subway platform or the opportunity to study at one of the city's many art schools. One of the foremost arts institutions located on 141st Street and St. Nicholas Avenue is the Harlem School of the Arts. It was founded in 1964 by opera singer Dorothy Maynard, and thousands of children and adults have passed through its doors, studying music, theater, dance, and the visual arts. And in the process, they have learned the kind of discipline and rigor they need to cope with the vicissitudes of life. I'm delighted to welcome Yolanda Wins, director of the school's music department, to tell us about the school's history and its programs. Welcome. Thank you for having me. You know, I suspect that a lot of people um, are able to envisage uh, young white children or young Asian uh, children uh, going off to study uh, violin or harp or piano, uh, but that not as many people know that you know, a lot of African American children are doing the same thing. Sure, absolutely. Um, which is sort of where the Harlem School of the Arts uh, has been instrumental in making that happen. Mm -hmm. so, so when did it get started and how? Okay, so um, Dorothy Maynard, a uh, well-acclaimed uh, singer, soprano, um, came up with the idea that she wanted to start a school of the arts. Um, and it started in the basement of her church, St. James Church, which is now right next door to the physical building. And in there she did um, everything from piano lessons, violin lessons, uh, voice lessons, and then migrated it into other uh, uh, categories of theater, dance, and visual arts. Um, so she started in the basement and then came up with the idea she wanted a building. And um, the building was established, and in 1979, okay. um, she appointed uh, Betty Allen to be the president of the school. Another soprano. Another mezzo soprano. Oh, no, mezzo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, the Harlem of 1964 was not the gentrified Harlem that we know today. It's a lot of physical blight, poverty, few outlets for artistic expression. I would imagine that was one of the things that prompted her to. Absolutely. She wanted to reach out into uh, the urban community, um, the communities that didn't have um, and want, and felt very important uh, felt it very important that culture uh, was important to the community, and so she opened up the doors to um, people of color, Latinos, um, to come in and to take lessons. Tell me about your your uh, facility. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have practice rooms, dance studios, mm -hmm. auditorium? What mm -hmm. be, what's in there? So the Holland School of the Arts building. Um, we have rehearsal studios, uh, practice studios, we have ensemble rooms, we have a gallery space where we um, showcase uh, artists, visual artists, as well as the work of our students. Um, and we have a theater where we have our productions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how many students would pass through the school? Oh gosh! In the course of a year. Uh, in the course of a year, every maybe up to five thousand really students because we do partnerships. So we have after-school programs that uh, is connected with our outreach program where uh, schools will bus the children to our facility to take lessons, to do a uh, art class, a visual art class, to do musical theater class, or to do a dance class. Okay, so are we talking, are the students, majority are uh, children, I know you have adults as well, mm -hmm. what's, what's sort of the... Oh, breakdown? the age group, gosh, we started 18 months. Because 18 months? 18 months, because we have a partnership with Jazz at Lincoln Center, where the Weebop program, <laughs> I mean, they start out as young as 18 months and goes to age three, and that's during the day between the hours of like 11 and maybe even earlier, like 10 to 11.30. Mm -hmm. 
and they learn percussion and they learn little xylophone and they just uh, the discovery of right, music. Of music. Mm -hmm. Right. But I would think the majority of your students would be uh, minors. And then you have. Well, we have um, four to I would say four to 18. Right. Um, would be like the dynamic of the school. Right. Um, and the four year olds would start out in like an ensemble class, like uh, introductory to keyboard or a group violin class or a group guitar class, just to introduce them to the instrument. Right. And then when they decided this maybe is what they'd like to do um, or, or intrigued more with the instrument, then we offer private lessons I anywhere see. from 30 minutes, 45 minutes to 60 minutes. Would that be where the adults would come in, where most of yes, the adults would be in the private lessons? We have adults in private lessons and we have adults in ensembles because what happens is you like to have the camaraderie of coming together and working together as an ensemble. Size of the faculty and who, who are they? Um, well, within the music department, we have 37 to 40 uh, faculty. Um, and we're all, I'll say we're, all uh, performing artists still. Um, I come from the Broadway community. I was in Color Purple. And so now I'm giving back um, to community. So I teach uh, voice at the school as well as I'm over the Dorothy Maynor Singers, which is named after our founder. And it consists of our advanced students, advanced voice students, um, and our prep kids, Okay. which I can talk a little bit more about. But all of our faculty uh, come from Juilliard or Manhattan School of Music or Berkeley School of Music, um, or are just uh, performing artists, mm -hmm. you know, um, and still working. Um, we lost last year uh, James Bartow, who was our guitar uh, instructor, and he had been there. Matter of fact, Dorothy Mayna appointed him uh, over the music department mm -hmm. at one point, and he stayed there until the end. Wow, yes. wow. So let's talk about the, uh, the, the four divisions, mm -hmm. um, the music program. What kinds of offerings? Well, obviously, from a very early age, and mm -hmm. their group classes, their mm -hmm. private mm -hmm. classes. So, so we're talking about both instrumental mm -hmm. and we, and voice. So uh, we're talking about um, any instrument, from violin to guitar to um, bass guitar to trumpet. We have uh, flute. We have winds. We have woodwinds. We have brass, um, and we have voice. Um, with voice instruction, though, we don't do private lessons until seven, age seven, for uh, girls and boys because the the voice is a uh, the voice box is a uh, muscle that's still developing. Mm -hmm. So we do offer like uh, children's choir, okay. you know, just to get them intrigued with uh, singing. But the more disciplined study. Uh, would be age around age seven. Okay, so you have you you had some voice students that young? Oh, absolutely. Really? Oh, absolutely. We have voice students that are on Broadway. <laughs> well, that's <r> so <laughs> we have <laughs> to train to them. You know, early we've got students now that are in Lion King, mm -hmm. that are in Matilda, that are on tour with Lion King and Motown, um, and so you know we've got the professionals. You know that seek our uh, training, and we have people that just want to do it for a uh, you know, hobby, or right. culture. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I was telling you before we started taping that I remember I came to one of Betty Allen's master her, to her classes. master class. Yes. Right, right, yeah, right. <laughs> um, I would imagine, how about performing activities in the music program? Oh, it's ongoing. Um, we just had our gala at the plaza uh, for Halloween, um, and the Dorothy Maynard Singers sang. Um, what kind of group is that? that is the a Dorothy Maynard uh, Singers is a choir that consists of anywhere from 15 to 25 kids okay. between the ages of 12 and 17. And they're more advanced group um, of the school, and they're the gr group that are like our um, ambassadors of the school. So when we have um, programs outside of the school, they perform. Last year, we had the honor of performing with the New York Philharmonic. Um, the current artistic director there, uh, Eric Owens, 
approached us. He, who actually studied also with Betty Allen, okay, um, approached us about doing um, a tribute to some of the African American uh, opera singers, and Betty Allen was one of them. So, uh, is, is the music program the largest pro division at the school? Um, well, it, we we kind of run neck and neck with the dance department. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, where Aubrey Lynch is our um, uh, director of dance, and okay. he comes out of Alvin Ailey and Complexion. Okay. So we, before we go to dance, you had indicated that there's been a a, a shift mm -hmm. from classical music, mm -hmm. um, interest in classical music, mm -hmm. towards musical theater. Mm -hmm. So as a whole, um, as I even tell my students, the training is the same the genres are different. So we have basic, at least when I teach voice, the basic training is classical training. How to breathe, you still have to know in any genre how to breathe, how to project your voice, um, how, vocalizing the voice. Um, so it's all classical training. However, the interest of the students is not classical. It's more. It's not in, in, in singing French art songs. Or, no, you know, or, or Italian opera. art songs, no. Um, most of the kids, when they come to audition, they're auditioning with pop songs from Ariana Grande to um, Justin Bieber. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's their interest right now. And I think it's also because of social media. Okay. You know, it's exciting. And so um, uh, what I do as an instructor is, you know, I say, okay, well, you teach me uh, the pop world, and I'll intrigue you with something. And usually the musical theater, because it's so close to the pop world now, um, I can introduce them to that music, that mm -hmm. genre. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so do, do you have kids who are, who are really interested in going to Broadway or... Oh, absolutely. Or as, as opposed to singing at the Met? Yes. Well, we, we start out, because we start out so young, we have students that are interested in auditioning for the specialized high schools. I like see. LaGuardia, like uh, professional performing arts, like Frank Sinatra, or Talent Unlimited. And so we prepare them for the audition because you don't know how many people, students, go to auditions and have no idea of what it's going to be like mm. other than just singing. Right. They have to know theory how to read music, you know, what's a whole note, what's a half note. Um, they have to know rhythmic dictation, you know, and they want to see how far they are, you know, in the auditioning process. It's not just singing. And so you prepare them for that. So okay. we prepare them for that as well as for college. You know, we have, our, through our prep program, it's, it's a merit scholarship program where we train the students um, to prepare for auditions for uh, anywhere from Berkeley, to um, the new school, to Manhattan School of Music, to Juilliard. Okay. And we're fortunate to have students in those there. institutions, yes. We're going to take a short break, then we'll be back with more with Yolanda Wins, Music Director of the Harlem School of the Arts. <music> Welcome back to One to One. I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York, and I'm talking with Yolanda Wins, musical director of the Harlem School of the Arts. Tell me about your dance program. What age do they start at and what kinds of classes? So um, they start as age four. Um, artistic, uh, the uh, director of dance is Orby Lynch, um, who comes from uh, Dance Theater of Harlem as well as Ailey and uh, recently was dance captain of the uh, Lion King on D with Disney. Um, and it's an ABT program, uh, American Ballet. In other Ballet. words, you're t you're, they, they teach in the ABT training style, yes. right? Yes, okay. yes. So it's very, you know, it's, it's intense. Um, so that we have classes from, from ballet to African dance to modern dance to hip hop. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, a lot of little girls wanted to take ballet. Is, mm -hmm. the, are, is, is that the big program? Is it the ballet program? Are they, are, are they more interested in modern dance or is it? It both? actually varies. I mean, a lot of the students start out in ballet 
and then kind of drift into modern dance or uh, hip hop or jazz. We even have uh, jazz and tap. Um, so, you know, it varies, but the starting point is the ballet. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned your, the pre-professional program, and I was reading on your website that mm -hmm. in that program, students are required to take eight classes a week? Yes. Is that in dance or in? in dance. Okay. In the dance pre-prep uh, pre program. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's a vigorous uh, program, but we train the dancers. This is the lifestyle. And these are people who really are looking to, to try to have careers in mm -hmm. dance, obviously. Yes, yes, wow. yes. Your theater, tell me about your theater program mm -hmm. and your visual arts program. Sure. Our uh, theater program is run by our artistic director as well as our, he's our theater director, Alfred Pricer. And um, it consists of students that want to do physical acting, musical theater, um, or Shakespeare, uh, Shakespearean uh, classical type acting. Um, and you know, the prep program is basically where the students come together to present productions. Um, they're in production <laughs> right now for the Christmas holiday of Soul Nativity, and we're excited about that. Um, yeah, and it's just intense training um, by professionals. Um, from musical theater with the little ones, right, to physical uh, physical acting. Um, and Is that usually like an after school thing or a weekend thing? Where they come? Um, pretty much, the school has classes um, Monday through Friday after school. Starts anywhere from three three o'clock, three thirty, to about mm, eight thirty um, classes, and then Saturday we start as early as. Uh, 8.30 for a private lesson or 9 o'clock for group classes mm -hmm. all the way till the evening. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Tell me about the visual arts program. So the visual arts program, um, they, they, they do drawing, they do sketching, um, they also do um, graphic arts, photography. I think we have an, a great array of classes, you know, for the students to take um, and that director is uh, J.P. Uh, Jonathan Patton. And that goes all the way from what age? Uh, maybe? Four to 18 to adults. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Um, with such an array of offerings, I, you know, it's a huge undertaking. Mm -hmm. What kind of administrative staff do you, do you have? Um, you know, it's not that large. It's, it, we have a registrar and her assistant, um, and then we have the bursar and his assistant. We have a business manager. And we have a facilities manager, um, and then we have a studio manager, which is over all of the studios okay. and rentals and things like that. Uh, of course, we have our president, um, uh, Eric Pryor, and we have our artistic director, um, Alfred Pricer. And the directors of each division. And then the director of each division. Right, right. Well, that's a pretty good, yeah. when you start counting them up. Yeah, yeah. Um, where does the funding come from? Well, we're fortunate to have donors um, from all Fortune, type Fortune uh, 500 uh, businesses, and we have private donors. Um, we were fortunate to have a wonderful donor in Mr. Herb Albert um, that the school is also uh, co-named after the Herb Albert Foundation. That was about five years ago? About five you? years ago. And how much did he give you? Was it five million? It was million? close to six million. Okay. If not over six million. How dollars. did he happen to... Get involved. Um, well, this is before my time, but the school was in, you know, a little situation was in financial difficulty, and actually had to close down for a little bit. I want to say a few days. It wasn't long okay. before he stepped in with the mayor uh, Bloomberg, and there there was a board created. Um, President um, Charles Hamilton. And um, Janice the uh, Williams, yes. Oh, I know Charles. And okay. Janice, <laughs> uh, yeah, and Janice Williams of okay. the Williams Group um, came together with a board, and um, Herb Albert gave um, this money over a duration mm -hmm. of time. So it's now the Harlem School of the Arts, and it's the Harlem School of the Arts Herb Albert uh, School. Okay, all right. Um, has gentrification of Harlem 
affected the school's programming, enrollment, fundraising, level of commitment? How, how oh, have you Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've got students now, not just from the urban communities, we have middle class uh, families um, come to the school. We have the upper echelon that comes to the school. We have dynamic from African American, Latino, Asian, you know, coming to the school. Um, and the gentrification has helped because it opens the doors to uh, different genres of music from jazz to classical to pop mm -hmm. to musical theater. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that you have students who have gone on to perform mm -hmm. professionally. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some of those. Well, I'm really excited at the moment because um, my student, Way McDonald, is currently on The Voice and she has now um, gone all the way to the live performances, so we're really rooting for her. She's already passed the blind auditions, the this battle. This is for, the auditions for? The NBC uh, TV show, The Voice. Oh, 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 The Voice, okay. Yes. Okay, all and, right. And um, so she's on Team Alicia. Okay. And um, she turned all four chairs when she started wow. singing. How old is she? She is 17. Okay. And uh, we're so really tell, excited. Tell me her name again. So Way McDonald. Okay. Okay. So we have to vote for her because <laughs> she is in the live uh, performances right now. Okay. But I feel like she's prepared. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had her as a student at the Harlem School of the Arts for four years. She actually was there five years. I've only been in school four years. And um, she was a part of our prep program. And this is a student that knew that this is what she wanted to do as mm -hmm. a career. Mm -hmm. So she's currently in college at the William Patterson School, as well as now just left two days ago to go to LA for the live performances. Now in, in your prep programs, I mean, and these are students who are really preparing for, mm -hmm. interested in careers. Careers or music education. Okay, okay. Um, So we have students that are now at Berkeley School of Music at Manhattan School of Music, at Juilliard, at the New School, um, Do doing well. Do they have well. to audition for oh, the prep absolutely. program? Absolutely, yes. Okay. They have to, because it's a merit scholarship program. I see. Through funds of the donors, funds of, you know, private donors. Um, and so they win scholarships or are awarded scholarships that can be worth something like, you know, five to $7,000 in uh, programs, okay. in classes from, in the music department, you get a, an hour private lesson. I throw in the theory class because no one wants to know theory. Right, it's not right. something you pay for. Right. Um, so a theory class and then an ensemble class. And you get that free if you, win, if you are in the program. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And it's 32 weeks for the year. Uh, okay. 32 week program. Okay. Um, now, your background, I know you went to LaGuardia High School of, of was it? Was it, it was mu music and art Music then. and art, and now it's music yes. and art and the performing arts. Right, right. right. Okay. So I did two years in the old building on 135th Street and Convent Avenue, the music and art. Um, and then we went to the new school, LaGuardia okay. School of the Arts okay. um, in the Lincoln Center area. Okay, and you performed in the color purple? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, we've got about a minute left. Okay. What kind of advice from your own experience would you give to um, a young person who's interested in a career in music or the theater or dance or both? Any student that's interested in a career in the arts, um, the advice would be just do it. Don't be intimidated. Don't judge by other people or what you see. Just do you and do it to your best abilities. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I tell, you know, my student way, because, you know, you go into these competitions and automatically you start uh, kind of sizing yourself up to other people. And that's what we kind of do in life, too. Um, you know, whether our families say, oh, you should, you know, go on to the Apollo or you should go to the voice. No, you should train. First. Well, there you go. I mean, that I mean that would be the I think would be the essence that you, yes. that you have to study for it. You have to learn. Well, how to we're do it. in an age where you know young people think it's okay to be famous at doing nothing. Right. But you have to train. You have, and you to, have train. to work at. It. You have to and practice. You have to practice, and then practice the practicing. Right. And I still take a lesson here and there. Right. And I'm almost fifty. 
and then and seek so out then the you go to opportunities. You audition. You do more auditioning to learn how to audition, and um, and then have the confidence. Yeah, yeah. You know? So I'm really excited of what the school can give to all, people of all ages, from four to adults. You're never too old. Okay. So now all our viewers who didn't know you were there, now they know you're there. Yes. And hopefully can take advantage of it. Yes. We're out of time. I want to thank Yolanda Wins, music director of the Harlem School of the Arts, for joining me. For information about the school's programs and how you can participate, you can go to the school's website at hsanyc.org. For the City University of New York and One to One, I'm Cheryl McCarthy. If there are any people you'd like to hear from or topics you'd like us to explore, please let us know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016, or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you.